Hello, this is Dr. Scott Denstead, founder of Easy Weather Brief, your best online source for aviation weather and education. Welcome to episode 21 of Easy Weather Chat, a program to discuss various topics related to aviation weather. Well, thanks and welcome back. In this episode, my focus is going to be on what is called convective available potential energy. Convective available potential energy, or what pilots may know as CAPE. Now, I'll give you some background and we'll get into looking at some charts like you see here, and that is this is a forecast for what is called the most unstable CAPE. But first, let me provide some overview and background. First and foremost, CAPE is what is referred to as a thermodynamic index. It indicates whether or not there's sufficient moisture and sufficient instability in the atmosphere. In fact, it's really just a measure of how much potential energy is in the atmosphere. It doesn't tell you specifically there's going to be thunderstorms or not. That's a big misconception. I know a lot of pilots use CAPE sometimes to determine whether thunderstorms are going to be there or not during their flight. That's not a great solution, although when we see thunderstorms or deep convection, normally we find higher values of CAPE. That's not always the case, and we'll see that later. So it's important to, to first of all understand this is an index. This is not a thunderstorm forecast. It just basically is tells you what of the ingredients from a thunderstorm perspective are available in the atmosphere, kind of how the atmosphere is poised to support deep convection. So we know that thunderstorms require kind of three different components. They require that you have sufficient moisture, that is water vapor. Water vapor is the fuel for deep convection. It also determines whether there's enough instability in the atmosphere. Instability basically is a function or a representation of buoyancy in the atmosphere. So when the atmosphere is buoyant, air wants to, to rise, and as a result of that, we can get expansion and cooling of that air to produce clouds, and if that's continued vertically in a, in a way that produces really deep clouds, then we can get significant vertical mixing and therefore dangerous convective turbulence. And the last thing is what we call outside energy contribution. In other words, even if you have a lot of moisture and even if you have a lot of instability, you still need some outside energy contribution in most cases. So think about riding a bike. When you ride a bike and you're riding uphill, you have to put energy into it or somebody has to be pushing you from behind. Even on a flat surface, you still have to push, put energy into the system in order to ride your bike. Or again, somebody has to be behind you pushing you along or maybe pulling you as well. So when you think about the energy in the atmosphere, to create convection, that's what we're talking about. Now if you're lucky enough and you're on top of a hill, then you really don't have to pedal or put much energy into it, especially if you have a steep hill. You ride the bike down due to the simple concept of gravity allowing you to coast down that hill. 
Now, in most cases, convection is a combination of both of those. It's a combination of getting up the hill first to the top of the hill where you can then coast down. And so no different if you took a, your, let's say your shoe, it's on the floor and you picked it up and put it on your desk, you're increasing the potential energy of that shoe. You're taking the kinetic energy as you lift it up and then depositing it as potential energy on the top of your desk. No different than if you have a spring and you push down on that spring, you're turning kinetic energy into potential energy or adding energy into the system that is stored and is waiting there for you to release it at a later time. And that's the way the atmosphere works. It stores energy in the atmosphere and that allows for convection to develop assuming you can reach the top of that hill. And we'll explain that a little more as we look at a few skew t log p diagrams. So again you have to have all three of those components to produce some kind of vertical motion in the atmosphere which could eventually turn into deep moist convection and that deep moist convection might have lightning and as a result that will be determined as a thunderstorm. CAPE is a specifically as you can see up here this is a parameter that has an energy unit joules. Joules is an energy unit per kilogram. And essentially what we're dealing with here is the higher that number, the more stored energy in the atmosphere exists. And if there are ways to tap into that energy, you can get deep moist convection. Sometimes the atmosphere is poised such that you have a strong hill to climb that you can never there's nothing in the atmosphere allowing you, nobody pushing you behind on the bike to get you to the top of that hill. So in the atmosphere we can still see many issues where we see really high values of CAPE, but there will be little or no chance of deep moist convection or thunderstorms. And so forecasts for CAPE can be done, as you can see here, on a map. And you can see those represented by colors with the values shown here. Now, CAPE values of, of zero mean essentially the white area means that you have no stored energy in the atmosphere available for potential energy for that convection to develop. Could you still get a tall towering cumulus out of that? Sure, you could certainly do that, but it's unlikely or it's less likely for that to happen in these areas in white. When we start to see the gray and essentially blue, green, and yellow, and maybe even some purples, we have a lot of potential energy in the atmosphere. On well, this particular day, that's not really the case. We do have what essentially are kind of two areas, if you will. One here in Arizona and another here kind of in the lower Mississippi Valley area. We'll investigate this a little bit further to see what's going on. But essentially, as the afternoon wears on, you get right around here, around 18Z, which is uh, already passed, but ultimately this particular forecast was showing Cape values approaching somewhere in the order of 2,000 which again doesn't mean 2,000 is fairly high and certainly 4,000 is higher than 2,000 so we'll talk about what that means in terms of, of for convective potential. Usually when the cape is higher typically you're dealing with deeper convection cells that can go up to 40, 45, maybe even 50 or 55,000 feet or we're potentially dealing with convection that could rapidly, uh, rapidly develop 
in a short period of time. So Cape values in four and five thousand will typically be situations where that convection will erupt very abruptly when it does when it does at some point tap into that downhill situation. Whereas lower Cape values it may take a while for that convection to develop. It may not be as deep. But we've still seen some pretty strong severe weather even with low values of Cape, including the possibility of severity. So even though the Cape values may be low, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't get severe weather out of that particular weather system. Severe weather depends on a lot of other factors, not necessarily just Cape. Now we're not going to talk about lifted index, but I'll show you when we look at the SKU-Ts that lifted index is kind of very similar to CAPE, but it's kind of deemed at one specific level, and that is 500 millibars, or roughly 18,000 feet. But having said that, let's take a look at some of the SKU-T diagrams for this particular area and see what's happening in that region. I'm pulling in the SKU-T diagram for, in this particular case, for Pensacola, Florida. We noticed Pensacola had basically, um, which is right around here, I know this map is not the best overall in indicating where the state boundaries are, but essentially, um, you know, they're fairly high but not necessarily too high in this area around the southern, or I guess the northern part of this Cape boundary right here in, in blue. But nevertheless, we have essentially kind of a starting point to look at this SKU-T diagram in terms of Cape. Now if we, if we show this let me go back and load the soundings here. And let's just do 12 hours. And we'll go back, let's say, to 14Z today. And let's just use the regular OP40. And we'll load that. And this will allow us to see kind of what's happening um, over the next few hours in terms of, of Cape. So you notice here we have, and I'll zoom in on this a little bit more, so folks that don't quite understand how to read a SKU-T diagram, uh, the red line here is the forecast temperature aloft, and the blue line is the forecast dew point aloft, and we have the winds on the right side. We won't be focusing on winds uh, for this particular episode, but we're going to focus mainly on the red and blue lines. So essentially, when you create a parcel of air rising, that can give us a lot of information on things such as CAPE and lifted index, because they are always a function of a lifted parcel, because what are we talking about in terms of deep convection? We're talking about vertical mixing. We're talking about air moving upward ascending air and in order to really understand how that happens we got to kind of play a what-if game where we then lift a parcel of air and the way that I do that essentially and I'll explain the different kinds of parcels here is the simple one is called a surface based parcel so I'll basically put my cursor right here and I'm using the ruck soundings.noaa.gov site and I basically put in and, and click right on the surface temperature here and that will essentially produce what you see in magenta is a the parcel's lapse rate. So that's the lapse rate of the parcel. That's the temperature change in that parcel of air. Notice it saturates pretty low down. If I zoom in on this, you can see it's a little better. Is that that black line that you see right about there around 1,000 feet means that will be if this particular 
uh, situation, if that air, if somebody's pushing you on the bicycle, in this case a level uh, street or road, uh, it will essentially ascend and, um, let's say, come to a point where it saturates right around a thousand feet or so. And then from that point on, it's free to convect upwards. And you'll see the parcel itself above this is warmer than the environment, which is the red. So the parcel in magenta, and you look at the red, you can see the difference, and you see that the parcel is warmer and wants to rise. And I'll zoom back out here again and just show you that. One more time, I'll click on that. And you notice that uh, this value of Cape here is 1550 up the top. Uh, that means it's 1550 joules per kilogram. And it's positive. Negative Cape doesn't exist, but it's always going to be positive if it does exist. And if you're wondering about, let's say, the lifted index, let me zoom in here again and show you that. The lifted index is the 500 millibar level. Uh, let me uh, go back and try this again so I get a little bit better. There we go. And so you see if you go up to 500 millibars, which is roughly around 18,000 feet or so, uh, right about here, you notice in this case we have a temperature difference and the way you, you do this is you take the environmental temperature, whatever it happens to be, minus 9.2, and you subtract it from the parcel temperature. That looks about maybe 3 degrees warmer here. And essentially, that's the lifted index. So minus 9.2 uh, minus, let's say, uh, somewhere on the order of minus, let's say, 7 or 6 or something around there, you're going to get a lifted index of minus two or three, and that's again what it's showing up here as well. So that's the lifted index. You can see it's just at 500 millibars is where they take that particular index from. But CAPE, convective available potential energy, is actually the entire, this, for this particular parcel, that red hatched area that you see here is essentially what we essentially is a area between those two curves. If you've ever done any calculus, you know calculus when you do integrals, you're calculating an area under a curve. In this particular case, you're just calculating the area between the temperature, that's red, and the parcel, which is magenta. And when you calculate that area, that represents the amount of energy in the atmosphere as a total. Again, think about compressing that spring. When you compress a spring, you're creating a fair amount of potential energy after that spring is compressed. The more it's compressed, the more energy. And essentially, the more area here, the larger amount of cape. And therefore, in this particular situation, the more instability and moisture. Now, if, if uh, the dew point temperature was really far off to the left here, as it is in some cases. We can, we can try that and see what happens. We'll go up to, let's say, BNA, which is Nashville, Tennessee. Let's take a look at that. So that's still pretty, that's still pretty, uh, pretty moist. Uh, maybe we can go up to um, Let's see, let's go to ATL Atlanta, load that in, see what happens there. Yeah, that's still pretty moist there. Hard to find anything. Let's, uh, let's try going into my area, KCLT, loading that, we can see. Should be a little bit, yeah, there we go, there's a little bit more space. So in this particular case, let's look at, let's say, 21Z here. Actually, let's go back to 19, go to see a little bit more. You can see here in this particular case that um, if I click on this, the dew point temperature is way out here. So it's not a lot of moisture. So the bases of any clouds that may exist are probably up near 5,000 feet or so. And as I kind of look out the window, it kind of looks pretty much close to that. But you can see that 
the convective available potential energy here is a lot less. It's only 620. Um, and that's essentially because when you see, you see the temperature at the very top here kind of take a jog to the right, uh, it's creating some capping in the atmosphere. So if there were any convective clouds developing, they would kind of be kind of limited to somewhere around 20 to 23,000 feet in this area. But they can certainly grow up through that Cape region that's defined on the on the uh, skew T diagram here. And so that again gives you a pretty good understanding of, you know, you're not probably not going to get a lot of thunderstorms or even deep showery precipitation in this area because there's not much in the way of energy available and there may not be much in the way of significant weather in the area. So let's go back and take a look at our our situation here. So if we go back to the prog chart, so let's start at the surface analysis chart here. And you'll see the surface analysis chart, um, the latest one. And you can see here we have kind of a pseudo stationary front running into the southeastern U.S. and lower Mississippi Valley. And if we look at this over the course of the prog charts, you'll see that the prog charts basically kind of mimic that as well. So we have kind of the pseudo stationary front in the southeast, and you see the possibility of deep convection through this area. And it's not going anywhere fast. Uh, that stationary front is kind of hanging in that same region, but the possibility of convection still exists. And we saw when we looked at the Cape values, which I use, uh, this is the WRF ARW model. You can also, there's the most unstable Cape. And then you have the, um, the North American Mesoscale model, which also has convective indices, which includes uh, the most unstable and surface based Cape, for instance. Uh, this may be a little bit easier to kind of visualize where that is, but again, it gives you kind of an hour by hour visualization using a little bit different color coding than we were seeing earlier, but again pr provides kind of a different picture of those uh, where the energy is in the atmosphere that allows for buoyancy. Um, and there are others out there uh, that you can, can look at as well, but if we were to go back here again and look at this WF ARW model and kind of see how that's all going to evolve, um, we can certainly look at the forecast radar, which is a great depiction of how all that moisture is going to be wrung out of this, this weather that does have a fair amount of instability, and you can kind of see that all play out uh, here as well as what's happening you know, later on out in around the Atlanta area and down here closer to Pensacola and Destin, Florida, uh, or in the area of kind of Nashville and into uh, the northern parts of uh, Mississippi and such. Uh, maybe even Birmingham, Alabama. So all that is kind of the, the results of that vertical motion. That's what this is kind of depicting in terms of simulated reflectivity. But if we were to look at the, uh, the thunderstorm forecast, specifically from the Storm Prediction Center, again, this gives us the idea that, yes, where that high values of Cape are located certainly is the case where we see the higher percentages of the possibility of convection or thunderstorms in that area. Um, and then we can, again, further qualify what's going on by looking at other thunderstorm forecasts, like this thunderstorm probability forecast from the short range ensemble forecast, which again gives you a, a really good kind of depiction of what's happening over the course of time. So we see here again that uh, valid Let's say here, let's go into Tuesday, Tuesday ending at 21Z, again the highest areas of possibility of, of thunderstorms or of deep convection occur where you see those 40% areas. So this kind of checks out and is very similar to the pattern that you may see with respect to uh, CAPE. Now there are a couple different CAPE, uh, kinds of CAPE, I already mentioned one that was the surface based CAPE. But if you look at 
in this particular case you look at the other possibility is you have the most unstable cape which basically allows you to you know, we, we click on the surface that means that I'm lifting that particular parcel up but I could lift continue to click up here and keep, continue to lift different parcels and find out what happens to it so I'm just clicking along the actual temperature line and determining with each one of those par possible parcels what is the worst cape that comes up the highest cape values and you can see as I click up further the cape value you can see narrows down even more but there may be some cases especially when you're dealing with warm frontal systems where lifting a parcel from a higher altitude might produce more cape than from the surface and a lot of that happens when you start dealing with let's say low level temperature inversions here so anytime we deal with the temperature inversion it may actually be more beneficial see if I click on the surface here it doesn't produce hardly any cape and I don't see any cape here but if I click a little higher there's a little bit of cape showing up there and so that's where most unstable cape comes into play versus surface based cape and there's also something called mixed layer cape or mean layer cape which takes an average of the temperature and dew point in the first hundred millibars uh, for like a well mixed atmosphere uh, and that uh, is also utilized by forecasters And so when you are looking at the, the whole concept of what may happen here with respect to convection, um, you have to rem remember that CAPE is not necessarily always the answer to uh, the, the, the um, saying that just because you have high CAPE doesn't mean you'll always have the possibility of significant uh, convection going on. So here's an example. This is one of the... Uh, one of the workshops in Easy Weather Brief that you can view as a, as a member, and this is called Instability with No Convection. I'd recommend walking through that. This is lifted index, so it's not CAPE, but again, uh, what we're dealing with here are lifted indices of minus 10, which is really huge. The CAPE values here, if I remember correctly, were over 5,000. And you would look at this and think, wow, this area in the center part of the country is just destined to have some really nasty thunderstorms. And in fact, the chances of thunderstorms are nearly zero here, the chances of convection. Uh, and that's essentially because of the kind of the, the overall um, depiction here, and I'll, I'll try to do this without going through here, I'll just map through it, is that we have this kind of major ridge going on in the upper atmosphere that tends to allow air to sink. So even though you have a lot of keep, you have a lot of instability and you have a lot of moisture potential at the surface you have this upper level ridge that's kind of keeping you from uh, essentially allowing that vertical motion to occur and so what we end up with here is you can see wow look at this a huge amount of cape so I'm lifting this from the surface here huge amount of cape I mean over 7600 and most pilots would look at this and say I'm not flying I look at this and say this is a great day to fly yes it's a little bit warm but ultimately this convective inhibition which kind of is like negative cape this green hatched area is capping the atmosphere so think of that as an uphill battle to get to that downhill so once you were to get the air up here around let's say 8,000 feet right there then wow that particular area can explode and become a significant area of weather developing very rapidly because of the large amount of cape that's available here but this is the uphill battle that you have to face because of that kind of lower um, kind of um, let's say less of a of a lapse rate that's going on near the surface here then at that point in time we see this convective inhibition occurring which tries to cap the atmosphere so it, it's not wanting to rise on its own. So you really need a strong, either something that's going uphill, up the side of a mountain, which in this case, this is in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, to really get into that. And unfortunately, that's not really um, going to happen here uh, because there was no significant, um, you know, basically this is the this is the weather that occurred. You got some you know, clouds and such. 
maybe maybe a cell or two down here uh, in the northern kind of northwestern part of Arkansas but this entire area stayed clear so just because you have huge amount of Cape does not necessarily mean that you'll have a huge amount of thunderstorms going on so let's make sure we use the appropriate and look at the big picture to understand what the threats are. So that wraps up episode 21 of Easy Weather Chat. My name is Dr. Scott Denstead, and as always, I hope you enjoy the simplicity of Easy Weather Brief.